How do you state the restrictions on rational functions? Rational functions can be identified because there are x's on bottom. The answer to how do you state the restrictions is factor all of the denominators, and then you set each factor not equal to zero, and then isolate for that variable. Here's a monstrosity of a sum or product rational function. I'm not going to simplify it, I'm simply going to state the restrictions, because that's what this video is about. This bottom is already factored, it's x plus 2, there's nothing we can pull out of both of those. This is fully factored, nothing we can pull out of x and negative 1. This is fully factored because they're not both divisible by the same number. This is not fully factored because it is a difference of squares. This x squared minus 9 might as well be rewritten as x minus 3 times x plus 3. If your teacher's mean, maybe they give you something extra complicated, and then you have to factor it extra. Spoiler alert, I'm going to do that over here. But factor all the denominators and then set each factor not equal to zero. What I mean is that x plus 2 is not allowed to be zero because if you're dividing by x plus 2 and it is zero, then you're dividing by zero and that's not allowed. What do you do with this? You move the 2 to the other side so you get x not equal to negative 2. If you note that there's a shortcut from here to there, I almost guarantee you're going to be allowed to use that. But officially, the reason the shortcut works is that you can't let the denominator be 0. x minus 1, therefore, cannot be 0. And when you move the 1 over, x can't be positive 1. Because then 1 minus 1 would be 0, and you can't do that. 2x minus 5 is not allowed to be 0. Move the 5 over, 2x is not allowed to be the same as 5. And dividing both sides by 2 gives me x cannot be 5 halves, or 2.5. That's a restriction, that's a restriction, that's a restriction. And we got two more coming down the pipeline. x minus 3 can't be 0. Move the 3 over. x is not allowed to be positive 3. x plus 3 is not allowed to be 0, so x is not allowed to be negative 3. So my final answer here is that x is not allowed to be negative 3 or negative 2, or positive 1, or 2.5, or 3. That's five restrictions on a single function. Yeah, well, if it wasn't a complicated question, they'd make it more difficult somehow, am I right? Yeah, I'm right. Let's do this together. How are you going to do this? How are you going to state restrictions on this rational function? You're going to factor all the denominators and set the factors equal to 0. S, get it. Factoring the bottom here leaves me with, well, two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 5 is x minus 3 and x minus 2. I did it. Oh, I should point out that literally anything that's ever on the bottom is what is not allowed to be 0. Here, we have x squared plus 4x minus 21 on bottom. It's not allowed to be 0, and so each of those factors need to get this not equal to 0 treatment. But also, because you're dividing by this fraction, you're going to take the reciprocal of it and multiply. Okay, remember how dividing by a fraction is multiplying by its reciprocal? The factored form of the bottom here, two numbers that multiply to negative 21 and add to 4, is x plus 7 and x minus 3. I've written that on the top of this fraction because I've converted dividing to times it little advanced move there, I did two things at once. Can you factor the top here? It will get written on bottom. Yes, well I can put the 10 there. I'm left with x squared minus 4. If you're clever, you note that that's a difference of squares and it will factor to x minus 2, x plus 2. Wow, that's complicated, but don't worry, we handled it. Oh, another division, damn it. Multiplying by the reciprocal. Pulling 5 out of both of these gives me 5x minus 2, and the x plus 7 gets written on bottom of the new fraction. Okay, what's not allowed to be 0 here? Literally anything that ever appeared on bottom. This was always on bottom, so we need to give the not equal to 0 treatment here. This used to be on bottom, so it needs that treatment. Even though it's on the top now, it used to be on bottom. So you have to account for it when you're stating the restrictions. This is now the new bottom. 
this is on bottom, and this used to be on bottom. Can you believe we're going to have to account for all of these? Well, we are. Let's go. That's not allowed to be zero. I'm going to use my shortcut here because uh, I want you to get a hang of using the shortcut as well. X minus 3 gives me X not equal to positive 3. Huh? X minus 2 gives me X not equal to positive 2. This gives me the same X e not equal to positive 2, so I'm not going to rewrite it. This one gives me a new one. X can't be negative 2 because of that. I've got two extra restrictions from what is now the numerator, but what used to be the denominator. From this, I get X cannot have been negative 7, and X cannot have been positive 3. What a mess. This gives me negative 7, which I've already accounted for, and this one gives me positive 2, which again I've already accounted for. The whole number 5 and 10 here are whole numbers without x, so there's no restriction on the x value just because of those. You need an x or a variable in each one if you're going to state the restrictions for it. So my final answer here is x not equal to, uh, oh, I accidentally did positive 3 twice. I didn't need to do that, but hey, free country. Negative 7, negative 2, 2, and 3. I just like putting them from lowest to highest when I state my answer. There it is. Literally any factor that was ever on bottom needs to be accounted for in the restrictions. Not too difficult. The most difficult it's going to be is ugly ones to factor. And also these other kinds where you have a coefficient in front of the x, you're going to have to move the whole number over. You're flipping its sign to positive 5 in this case, and dividing out the coefficient, which is why it's over 2 here. Whatever, you'll get the hang of it as you practice. Practice with your own homework, and hey, best of luck to you.